a lot of times they, there are events that happen in our lives that seem like the most devastating thing, like things so tragic or your worst fear. And sometimes it might even make you question God, like, you know, what is going on? Why is life so unfair? Why is this going on? Sometimes it's a series of events, right? That seem to be like cascading into your downfall. Like sometimes the shit that happened right after you asked for help, you know? And a lot of the times these happenings are necessary. A lot of the times these happenings shake you out of a stuck mentality or a stuck situation or a stuck perspective. And it shakes you in a, in a way that first, you know, it starts devastation, you know, it leads to devastation at first, but then it's, it'll shake up your whole world so that you gain some sort of insight. You see something that you might not have seen before, you know? You could be the type of person like, I don't hurt nobody, I don't do nothing to nobody, but everybody does stuff to me, everybody hurts me, everybody's trying to use me. And it's like, those things happen so that you can see other people's intentions, so that you can see what's going on around you. You might, you, you, these things don't always mean you deserve the experience, but sometimes it is a thing you need because the balance in your perspective is off, you know? You're not actually seeing what's around you. So these things shake you up and shake your world in order to so for you to reconfigure your perspective. Sometimes when we ask for truth, ask for clarity, a trickster, a trickster uh, energy, whether it's a person or whether it's a bunch of people or whether it's a situation, are put in your path in order for you to constantly fall under their, uh, their tricks, right? Fall for it time and time again, as many times as you need to, uh, to wake up and realize what's actually going on. For you to realize your strength and realize what you deserve, you know? So that trickster energy is, is allowed to run rampant in your, in your life, in your, uh, in your circumstance. And I say trickster energy because sometimes it's not just one person. A lot of times when you have not learned a lesson, these things keep coming up over and over again. When you have learned a lesson, these things keep coming up over and over again so that you, uh, that you apply how to learn, with, how to deal with what you've learned, you know? So that energy flows through different people and it's usually people who's close to you or people that you work with, whatever it is. It is not simply there to, uh, to trick you, but to kind of snap you out of whatever deluded reality that you're living in, you know? And again, this doesn't mean that something has to be wrong with you. You could be too nice, you could be too forgiving, you could be too self-sacrificial, you know what I'm saying? You could be, you know? So these devastating energies have to cause cataclysms in your life so that you can break down the old you and build yourself up into a new version of you. And this doesn't happen once, it doesn't happen twice, it happens over and over again, you know? And when we get stuck in cycles, it's because we're not seeing what's going on. We're not catching on to the pattern, you know what I'm saying? So we get caught in these cycles, but it's fine because this is a story, this is a game, this is a, a, a play, you know what I'm saying? So that we're working out through life, these, are, these lifetimes are our story, it's our story where so, so we're working it out we're working it out as we go, you know what I'm saying? So the people who are stubborn, the people who choose not to, uh, not to change their ways, not to, the ones who choose not to change into a better version of themselves, they'll, you know, stay where they are, they'll continue those cycles. The ones who, who don't want the change, right? This will happen over and over in their lives, over and over again until they learn, you know what I'm saying? And we're eternal beings, so we have forever to figure it out. If we don't figure it out before the end of, of the earth cycle, then you're gonna go to another realm, you're gonna go to this, you know what I'm saying? It's, you have forever to do this, you know? And in my life, like, before I was like too nice, like I had people run all over me, you know what I'm saying? I was allowing that to happen. So I wasn't seeing myself for who I was, right? I, I saw the light in everybody else, but I couldn't necessarily see it in myself, right? But at the same time, there was a lot of, like I'm gonna use that same example, that trickster energy around me, right? Ones who wanted to keep me in a suppressed type of energy, right? And not know my own, uh, my own greatness, not know who I was, because once I knew who I was, they wouldn't no longer have control over me, right? They couldn't take from my energy, they couldn't, use me to make themselves feel better right they, there was no control right and, and they they saw something about me they can no longer harvest or mirror my energy back to me or keep me around so that they can you know use my use my identity as their weird shit weird shit that people was doing right but this was all to keep a sense of control so for me instead of the trickster energy this was vampire this was shapeshifter energy you know and the fact that people could do this like and don't get me wrong like i'm not the things that you think that you may think are not real like vampires and, and shapeshifters and all the dumb things is real, you know? And it's not real. It's real in this illusion. Like people are really doing this thing, these things. People are really using magic in order to control people. People are really energy harvesting. People are really sacrificing people. These are the energies of fear and all its modalities that's taken from natural light energy, right? Natural people with abilities, natural magic and stuff like that and used for, uh, uh, and it's used for greed. It's used to control is used to make people who don't naturally feel powerful, feel powerful, right? These are people who don't want to do the work. These are entities who don't want to do the work. These are whatever who do not want to do the work. So they take and they, and they take from the ones with pure intentions, with pure light, you know what I'm saying? The ones that don't know who they are, right? And this could be going on for lifetimes, people not knowing who they are, but then in one lifetime, they finally wake up and they finally realize what's going on around them, you know what I'm saying? And they finally realize like, 
you know, sometimes it's the ones close. A lot of the times it's the ones close. Like, it's not going to work with people who are not close to you. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to work. You're going to see that, see right through them. But sometimes you can't really see when those people are close to you. But once you start waking up to who you truly are, once you start waking up to your value, to like really seeing yourself and your natural magic and what you have to offer, you realize like, oh, it's the close ones. And then as you move on, as you start seeing from that large perspective and you start seeing the tricks and you start identifying what's really going on, you can spot it in a second. You know what I'm saying? Like, and the, the good thing is when you do spot it, you can wiggle it off in a second. Like you could just wiggle that shit off because it's not yours to hold, right? It's spiritual warfare, but then you realize it's not no war. Like spirit, spiritual warfare, warfare is pointless. You know what I'm saying? Once you realize that you've been at war, you know what I'm saying? With going through your emotions and being so unstable and not and not feeling well and feeling depressed, that's that's the warfare part. But once you start to get to know you, once you start healing through your trauma, right? Once you start healing those things, that's when you realize you realize that energy is energy. You know alchemy. You know how to turn brass into gold. You know what I'm saying? So you take that energy that you might be feeling and you turn it into your own energy. Like just recently, I just did that recently. Like, I used to be a highly anxious person. Like, my anxiety, my issue with anxiety was through the roof. Like, it was physical and all types of shit. Like, it was crazy. But I haven't felt that in a long, long time, right? Because I, as I was healing through my shit, like, things started to, to disappear. Like, I wasn't feeling those same issues. I wasn't feeling depressed. I wasn't feeling the anxiety and all that stuff. So now that it, if it comes back in any way, in any form, I know how to get rid of it easily. But if it stays, like... If I feel it, and, there's, and it's not even a whole lot of it, right? But if I feel that, I'm like, mm, why is that little achy feeling? Why is that little anxiety coming up? And you're like, oh, it's easy to realize this is not your energy. You know what I'm saying? Rationally, I'm not feeling this way. But even on an energetic level, on an energetic level, on an emotional level, I'm not feeling this way. So why is that feeling coming up? And then you're, I'm realizing like, oh, it's not my energy, right? So then I do those different modalities, you know, asking to help me get rid of this energy and honing into my own energy and, and um really feeling into my own energy right and then the energy around me becomes my energy and i realize that i've let go of the other energy right i don't know if i don't know if it, i don't like to do return to sender because i don't want to have no hand in any of that like if somebody's putting something on me i don't want to you know what i'm saying i don't need to do that like i don't have to do anything to anybody you know what i'm saying so i don't necessarily do return to sender type things but i'll do like you know help me release this energy like and wherever it's gonna go it's gonna go spirit got that you know what i'm saying but i don't deal with that you know what i'm saying i don't do i don't put shit on nobody you know what i'm saying even if they try to put it on me but doing that and releasing it, I feel it energetically, but I also feel it physically sometimes because those things manifested physically at times. You know what I'm saying? So it's just that's what led me to um, think about this today. You know what I'm saying? How we are alchemists, how we are shapeshifters, all kind of shapeshifters in a sense, because we are all pure energy. You know what I'm saying? When we come here into our form, we're, you know, carbon beings, but we're like coal, like we're like dark. We forget our light. Right. Until what the fire comes and we can become pressurized, pressurized and then we come out like diamonds you know what i'm saying and as a diamond you realize that you're a mirror you know what i'm saying as you transform and become more and more pristine and when i say pristine i'm not even talking about perfection right in, in terms of becoming that diamond when you become that diamond you become yourself you become more perfect because you're coming into your own you become more more of who you are right and nobody you become that fingerprint you become that unique you you know what i'm saying and nobody could really wag a finger to you because it's it's authentic you know what i'm saying but as you become authentic as you become that crystalline structure right as you become that mirror and people start seeing themselves in you sometimes you become their trigger right you couldn't have you might not have done nothing to them you know what i'm saying but you just existing because you are a mirror because they're seeing themselves and they're not liking what they see you become their trigger you know what i'm saying and and not only are they malintended intended like not only don't they have ill will towards you but they start and not only are they projecting onto you but they start attacking, right? Because they see that part of themselves that they don't like, you know what I'm saying? Or they're comparing themselves to you. Whatever they're seeing is not the true you, but it's them and the things that they want to change in them. It's their trauma that they're dealing with, right? That they're working out. So for example, even the people who see me change, I'm not the same person that I once was, right? But they still want to do their little shit because they're not used to me being who I am. They like to see me low. They like to have that control. They still do their little shits. But the thing is that I can feel their energy because their energy is laced with their own anxiety. You know what I'm saying? Their energy is laced with what they tried to project onto me in the past, you know? And as I started coming into the realization of who I was, like I said before, I realized that a lot of that was not my energy, right? That anxiety, that depression and stuff, that was not my energy. That was the energy that they was throwing off onto me, you know what I'm saying? But they're holding on to it because they wasn't dealing with it, they was throwing it off, you know? So I was just saying that recognition of that old energy, right? Even though it was going on today, it's still past, it's still past energy. I don't have no feelings towards it, whether people are still doing that shit or not. Like, I don't have no feelings towards, this now, towards it now, but it's making me feel nostalgic and it's making me feel grateful, right? That I had actually gone through that, even it was, though it was the most devastating time of my life, right? It made me the strongest and I felt strong going through it. You know what I'm saying? So that strength built my character into who I am today. And I appreciate who I am today. It's not like, oh, I'm king of the world. Or I'm at the end of my journey. It's never the end. Like, 
I'm always growing, always learning. Like I'm hungry for it, hungry for the knowledge, hungry for that expansion, that growth. You know what I'm saying? It's never a destination, but I'm glad I've gotten out of the warfare. You know what I'm saying? I'm not at war with myself. I'm not at war with my emotions or my feelings. I'm not in a depressed state. I'm not filled with anxiety like those things have passed and when they come up and little spouts like that little things little things it's only for me to differentiate what is mine and what is not mine and the best blessing is that it's barely a process now because i processed it over and over and over again through a bunch of cycles right and it's just coming back around all these shit's just coming back around like i've dealt with it so many times that it barely has an effect and i'm able to snap myself out of it you know what i'm saying just because i've dealt with it in the past and i feel grateful for that grateful that that's all it takes it's us showing up for ourselves in love in unconditional love like and learning that learning that process it's a process it's not just one time showing up it's not just doing one thing it's a constant constant first at first battle but then it's a constant just showing up after the battle is over you know what i'm saying so it's there's a piece to it because that you realize you have a foundation to go back to so it's just simply a blessing right all that heartache that you thought was the worst thing in your life before yeah it probably stirred up some some craziness and it probably was heartbreaking or heart-wrenching and but those things if you let it make you stronger you know what i'm saying and even if you don't let it it's still going to make you stronger but you might as well learn a lesson if you since you know that that's what life is doing it's teaching us you know what i'm saying so like wherever you are whatever situation is beauty all around it there's there's support and lessons and like god in it all you know like in it all you know so much so that even the people working against us, the people who think they're working against us, is really working for our good. There's really two ways to look at it, right? From a spiritual warfare type of type of way to look at it, it's like you will be their enemy, right? People trying to attack you, you will be their enemy because they feel threatened by you, and they're your enemy because they're literally attacking you, right? But if you look at it from the higher perspective, from the higher perspective of love, right? You realize you're their lesson and they're your lesson. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So y'all both benefiting from it, right? So you could let it be a double-edged sword, or you could let it be light. You could let it be love, you know, whether they choose to or not. That's how it's working. Everything is working for our good. You know what I'm saying? So there's always going to be more than one way to look at it. There's always going to be a higher reason for it, you know, whatever it is. And I'm really truly mean that whatever it is, you know, situ any situation. Right. It can be justified in terms of light. And this is from the standpoint of looking from many lifetimes. You know what I'm saying? You're looking at it from the standpoint of, of eternity. Always. You got to look at it from zooming out and look at it from a higher point of view. Always. What's the lesson? What's the soul's lesson? What are you learning? How are you growing? You know? From the space, from the point of eternity, there is no attack, right? There is no attack, right? You cannot be threatened. Your soul cannot be threatened. You are eternal, right? So that's why you got to pull it out from that eternal standpoint.